Invisibility is an out-of-this-world supernatural feature that we usually associate with spirits and ghosts. Intangibility is even more mind-boggling and hair-raising. Just imagine the uneasy feeling of running your hand right through the ghost. That's why it's not at all surprising that invisibility and intangibility are what makes skeptics out of most people who come across the rope model of light and gravity for the first time. Why can't we see or touch the ropes that mediate electromagnetic phenomena? How is it that countless ropes, serving as physical go-betweens during gravity, avoid getting tangled with each other? We could answer simply that, perhaps, in her infinite wisdom and compassion, Mother Nature knitted her threads invisible and intangible so that we wouldn't trip over them or get tied up in knots. However, there's a more mundane explanation. It has to do with a persistent experience that we intuitively learn to take for granted since childhood. We casually think of an object as that which we can see or touch because we use our visual and tactile senses every second of the day. And yet, although air is made of atoms, no differently than a rock or a tree, we can't see the air. A fact that puzzled the ancient Greeks so much, they glorified it as one of the fundamental elements. So we don't think of air as an object in our ordinary speech, despite that it is made of atoms, building blocks we normally associate with more rigid things. In principle, if we cannot see individual atoms, much less can we expect to see the electromagnetic ropes that interconnect them and are several orders thinner. We learn from this that it is not seeing or touching that defines an object. Not all objects enjoy these attributes. The only universal property objects have is shape. In a universe consisting of a single cube made of a single piece, we have shape and form, but there is as yet neither touch nor see, nor motion of any kind, which in all cases would require a second object. The lonely cube also lacks color as well as mass, and it is not comprised of physical or temporal parts. Only those words in the dictionary which allude to shape or form qualify as objects for the purposes of physics. Here again, many would argue that gases such as air and liquids such as water don't have shape, and therefore do not qualify as objects under this definition despite that they're comprised of atoms. Actually, anything made of atoms does indeed have shape. If an astronaut releases water in outer space, that blob has shape, although an irregular, indescribable one. Similarly, the oxygen and other molecules that comprise the air that encapsulates our planet collectively take on the form of a shell. Both air and water curve around our globe because each atom that comprises these bodies is bound to all others that comprise the Earth. The electromagnetic ropes don't get tangled because in their vanishingly thin world they lack the macro world property of touch that we experience every moment of our lives. It is the misconceived notion of the strategic word object and the unwarranted expectation of discovering Mother Nature's secret agents through experiments that has prevented theorists from zeroing in on the rope model of light and gravity. But the fact that we can see molecules and what they build in the macro world gives us hope to understand how Mother Nature produces tangibility. The key is aggregation. During the phenomenon we know as magnetism, countless threads bunch up to form a nascent wall that pushes and pulls on its counterparts. Despite being woven by intangible threads, an atom acquires the magical property of tangibility as a result of layers upon layers of interwoven threads that construct the fabric that forms its skin. And yet, we still have a problem and is the verb to touch. Before a pair of scissors can cut across, it must come in physical contact with the yarn. Tangling is necessarily preceded by touch. In everyday life, we casually say that the cup touches or is in touch with a table. Have the two objects fused to form one? Or does distance still keep them apart as distinct objects? For if they fuse to form a single body, it makes little sense to say that they touched a verb that requires the participation of two objects. Food for thought.